Hello and welcome to The Game Shed with me, Mark. Today I'm going to walk you through how to replace a Game Boy Advance SP housing. Now, our friends over at Monster Arcade have sorted us out with a couple of um, housings so we could show you exactly how to do it and uh, make, make you realise that it's, it's actually pretty easy and it, it's not sort of difficult like some things are to take apart and, uh, and fix, really. So, if you've got a Game Boy Advance SP that kind of looks like this, this is one that I did earlier. Actually, take, as you can see, that's empty. But if it looks like this, then it's not, not very good, is it, really? Anyway, so, that is one that I took apart. And, as you can see, this is the new housing that I put on it. Look at that. So... As you can see, it's got all the buttons there. Everything is perfect. As you can see, Game Boy, it's got the sticker. On the front, it's got the little Nintendo. So, very impressive case uh, housing, and we just want to kind of get the word out there about these housings and how good they are. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use this pretty mashed up pink uh, SP. It's not too bad, but um, as you can see, it's all scratched up there. And all around the edges, there's lots of marks and stuff like that. It's pretty bad. So I'm happy to take this apart and replace the housing. So the tools you're going to need for this job is first a very small Phillips screwdriver. My camera is not going to focus on that. A small flathead screwdriver that's for prying the plastic a tri-wing screwdriver like that and I've got a little guitar plectrum here which actually came as part of uh, a little pack I bought on eBay for the tools so outside of that I've got a third a fourth screwdriver here and um, this will come in handy later alongside this lovely hammer so what I'll do is I'm just going to move the hammer and the screwdriver out of the way for a bit and start with the small Phillips screwdriver. So first things first, take off the battery cover, just put that to the side and pop out the battery. That leaves you with some tri-wing screws. First one in the middle, just pop that out. So, just take that out. I think one thing I like to do, I'm just going to move that case aside, is to put the screws in order. These cases actually come with all the screws and all the bits you need. So you don't necessarily need to use the original screws. So it's, it's totally up to you. As you can see here, it's got the screws, it's got the rubber bits, it's got everything. So... That's totally up to you what you do, whether you use the new screws or just carry on using the old screws. I'm going to just keep them in order anyway, just in case. Um, and if you want, you could line up the new screws and the old screws next to each other so that you know which ones go where and in what order. So if you line them up one after the other, then right at the end you can just work backwards and you will see exactly where everything has to go. It's pretty easy really. Some of these triwing screws are a bit of a pain. I'm going to stay with that one. There we go, that was a tough one, that one. We've got one in the middle here, so another triwing. There we go. So that's the initial six screws that you have to take out, triwing ones. And at this stage, you'll see, you can just pop the back off. There. Pop the back up here, so it's out of the way. And next, you're looking at the main board. So there are a few more screws on the actual board, but as you'll see, you'll need your Phillips, your little mini Phillips, to get these ones off.
once you've taken those, you'll see that the actual main board comes off. But something is holding it back. Now I'm going to use my little flathead screwdriver here. Reason being, there's two little buttons here holding the ribbon in. And that's the ribbon that comes from the screen. So if you pulled it out, what you'll see now is you've got the button holders here, here here. You can pop those off and you can take the main board. Here you can see you've got left the D-pad with the D-pad cover there. You've got, let's just poke them through. If I just tap that out you can see they just fall out. So you've got A and B buttons there and the little backlight on, backlight off button. The last thing you'll see here is actually the speaker. So if we take all that and just pop it to the side, including the speaker cover, I'm just going to pop that there, what you're left with is the rest of the Game Boy empty with ribbon. Okay, so the next thing you need to do at this stage is pop off the rubbers. Once you've done that, you've exposed one, two, three, four, five tri wing screws. So I'm just going to take those out. And then you've taken all five screws out. The way to get the screen out, as you'll see here, is a tiny little screw. My camera does not want to focus on. Can you see they're just under the ribbon? So this is a flathead, flathead, a Phillips screw. So just gently take that out and pop it in the order. You'll notice there that that little piece comes off. That is what the, that little screw was holding on, which then in turn holds the two sides together. So I'm just going to pop that there. Once I've done that, you'll see that it's easy enough to just ease the ribbon out. So you don't want to pull the ribbon because you don't want to force it out. So just put the ribbon there, the little tab at an angle, ease the ribbon out there. There we go, and you've got the screen. So then put the screen to the side. The hammer. They are the little sort of grommety bits that are in here and in here. The camera is not focusing. There you go, see just there? And here. So all I do is I've got a slightly bigger screwdriver, put it at an angle. And just tap it once you've got the screwdriver in. And you'll notice they pop out a little bit. Just do that again. There we go. As you can see, that little bit you need. just popped out of there. So that's all it is, it's just a little plastic bit there. And these actually have a part on the top that you slide off. And that little plastic bit you'll replace with the right colour plastic bit. Okay. And that gives you your old casing pulled apart. So put all that to the side, including that, and you want to keep the screen and the main board there. So now, take that other little plastic bit off, like so, put those to the side, that to the side, and that's the whole, whole casing, and that's what you're left with. That is
is your Game Boy Advance SP. Screen and board. So, grab your new casing. Lovely new casing. We've been given a green and black one to go with the game shed. As you can see there, nice sparkly green. You don't need the battery or the battery cover or anything like that at this stage, so you can just put all that stuff to the side to kind of give yourself a bit of room. Very simply with the screen, just make sure you put it the right way around, obviously. You can put that in there. So you can see here, the if you put the screen in this way around, you can see the right way up, the ribbon curls around and you just pop it through the little gap there. You see on the back, you just pull it through. So, do that. Pop the top on. That holds it in place. Right, so you've got your new casing here. I've popped the screen in and I've fed the ribbon through. As you can see there, the ribbon put goes through. And it just very simply pokes through that hole there. So the best thing you can do at this stage is the last thing we did to put these little pieces in. Don't forget at this stage to slide the end bits on to the little grommety bits. They just literally just click in. You have to get in the right way round. But once they're in, just like that, you can take the case. And there is a certain way this has to go in. So just look at the lines inside and you can figure that out that way. So pop that in there, and just take your hammer again. Just give it a very light tap. Slide the end on to the next one. Clip it in like so. Just the right way around, it should just slide in. And then just give it, a, give it a few taps to knock it in. So as you can see, so after giving that a few more taps, just change the angle of that a bit, of the lid a bit, those pieces went in. So as you can see, this is this is the standard angle now. And it actually has a bit of a bit of tension to it so that when you pop it, it shuts. And you can see it has a little flick. That's so that it opens nicely as per the original. I've got two of these here, that's the darker one. I think I prefer having the, the light green in. So we just pop that in there. See that round plastic bit there? If it's lined up right, you turn it over. Take the, should be a, yep, Phillips screw here. Pop that in and just screw that in. As long as you're holding the bit behind, you'll notice it just goes straight in. So now, these two little grommets are holding the, the, the main catch together. This part, with the screw there, is holding that together. So now, you can open it up. As much as the top of the screen comes apart, it's a lot more sturdy. So. Next is these five screws. What you might want to do is just cover up the screen. There's a little piece of cardboard that comes with the package that Monster Arcade put together. Just so when you're screwing these screws in, you don't scratch the screen. And that's imperative. You don't want otherwise you're gonna to have to replace the screen as well. Okay. That now is the screen part. The main part of the screen done now. See all the screws are in and it's got a nice open closing action. If there's if you, if you're finding you've got problems at this stage with the open closing mechanism then you may want to take it apart and just check that nothing's got caught anywhere. Make sure the ribbon make sure the ribbon's not stuck in the mechanism uh, and make sure that the grommets are in properly, those bits on the sides. Right, so that is that. Next up, 
we have to put the uh, buttons in, like so. So we take the D-pad, and as you can see, it all, it all lines up. So this just pops over there, nice and snug. And there's a little nub there you push that into. In the middle where the D-pad is, just push that in, make sure it's secure. A and B. Now, you won't get these the wrong way around because the, um, the little plastic bits, you can see there, are different shape to each other. So, when you pop that one in, you know that's the right one. Because this is, as you can see here, it is a completely different shape. Just, just those little plastic bits that stick out. Just make sure the uh, B button there, sorry, the B button here is as it should be, and make sure that you've got the A button the right way round. Um, the A button is the only bit you can get the wrong way round, and when you open it up, you can see that I have it correct. So that's good. Right, so turn it over. Get your little pad here, and pop that over those buttons. Next is, you can see here, select and start. So just make sure that you pop these in carefully because you'll just end up dropping them or put them in the wrong way around like I just did there. These can be any way around because they're just blank buttons. Get your little rubber bit there, pop that over. Last but not least, is the little backlight button. Doesn't matter which way around this goes because it's just a little image of the sun. So pop that in and pop its little cover over. That is the buttons done. Right, so once you've got the buttons in like that, the next part to do is the speaker. So you can take that little speaker grill, pop that in first, it's there, and then take the speaker, make sure the numbers are facing up and just pop those pop that in there and that's it for the buttons and the speaker so at this stage you've got the buttons in you've got the speaker in and what you want to do is get the ribbon onto the main board this isn't too difficult you just have to make sure that you do it right otherwise you'll get no picture on your Game Boy. Just slide it in like so. Use your flathead screwdriver just to push those little clips. Make sure it's in, push the little clips. And what you'll see is that the the ribbon should be flat into the main board. Now mine was not very flat there so I'm just going to adjust that here. Push out a little clip. There we go. Okay so there you go. That's the ribbon on the main board. Make sure all your buttons are nicely down and then place that on top. And you can then get to screwing it in. Three screws here, all Phillips. Very handy if you've got a little magnetic screwdriver. You'll screw those three little Phillips in. Okay, so once you've done those three screws, just have a look at the casing. You see a tiny little square just here. This is a small piece of metal that you will see in the original case here. So you can either take it from the old one, or you can take it out of the pack that comes with the case. All that is is a little piece of metal that you just pop in there. Use your flathead just to push it down. So there we go. That's the little metal piece. And as you can see on the side of the case here, we have the on-off switch. The easiest thing to do is just 
leave that in the in the uh, top part of the case and just slot it in. If you just kind of wiggle this together, it should all just click into place. So once you've clicked your cover into place, you'll be able to see that your on-off switch clicks back and forth nicely. Don't want that to be too bad, too tight, or um, not move at all. Then you've got your volume slider here. Just make sure that slides okay. So turn that round. Then grab your first screw. And the first one I, the last one I took out was one of these side ones. So the, the longer gold ones go in the sides here. Once you've done that, just double check your volume slider works okay. Double check your on off switch switches on and off. It may feel a little stiff at first, but that will change. Right, so two more screws to do at this stage. You can see at the bottom and at the top. So the easiest way with this bottom one is to just drop it in there like that and just slowly push it into the hole. Like so. Get her screwed in, that one. Okay, so the final screw in just at the bottom here. It's another tri wing. Make sure you don't tear up your screws because otherwise you'll have problems later if you wanted to take it apart again. So there we go. One one or two last things to do. Just tear open your bag and grab the little Nintendo sticker. And what you need here as well. Is the little rubber bits that go in here. So just grab those little rubber bits, slide them into place, and just here we go. So that's the rubber parts done. It should close nicely there. Right, so grab your little Nintendo sticker and pry up, just pry up the edge there, look, so that you don't ruin this sticky bit. And try not to touch it. Try not to touch the sticky bit. Make sure you pop it the right way up. Because once you stuck it, it's pretty firmly stuck. There you go, that's the right way up. So I'm going to do the same here. And just, that just slots in there. Like so. Make sure you really push that down. Push it into place. Because once that's stuck, you don't really want that to come out again. Go, give that a rub to make sure it's look at that beautiful shiny new case. So, at this stage, you've just got to see whether it works. It's as simple as that. So, grab a game, whether that's a Game Boy game, Game Boy Advance game. I've got Astro Boy here, what a classic! Pop that in and keep your fingers crossed. sure your volume rocker works. Look at that. So there you go. I've gone from a pretty battered old SP to a brand new beautiful sparkly SP. And everything works a treat can see here you just just make sure your buttons work okay make sure your start button works turn the back light off turn it back on yeah and there you go so that is how you change a Game Boy Advance SP housing thanks to Monster Arcade go and check out his website monsterarcade.co.uk and I'll put all the links in the description. He can do custom ones like this or straightforward ones like this gold one here. Or he even has white ones. Look at that. I shall be doing one of my other SPs with that. And then I have three brand spanking new ones. So there you go.
that's how you change the housing. I hope this has been beneficial and I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you.